roads are unpredictable, and so is nature. Today, we brought in real mechanics to break down videos of cars in extreme weather conditions and give us some insight that just might save your car. It's real mechanic stuff. First clip. Oh, <laughs> did I just get my hit light lightning? <laughs> the hazards turned on for him. There's dude, flashers, he, I don't he know. thought to put his flashers wow. on? What a okay. G, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Got hit by lightning during your flashers oh. on. Oh. I wouldn't have thought about it. Flashers are hard to find sometimes, too. <laughs> what if someone pulls into the shop, it's like, you wouldn't believe it. Dude. Yeah, I just dropped my lightning. <laughs> I was in 1970s Greece. <laughs> a bajillion volts worth yeah. of electricity just going through every system in the car. I'd smoke the computer at least, at minimal, right? Or, For sure. Or pop some fuses. It's definitely gonna take a toll. You can yeah. see the smoke. It looked like it hit the glass and melted yep. it, which is crazy. I'd have to say your electrical system's gonna be pretty fried. You know, any wiring that's within the vehicle is just gonna be toast. I, to be honest, I don't know how the lights were still working on the car yeah. after it got struck. I've heard tales that like it can pass basically through the car and jump the tires and, and go to ground. That is nuts. If you are experiencing a heavy lightning storm, I would probably stay off the road as yeah. much as you can. Well, if you're in your car and you get caught in a thunderstorm, what should you do? You should just remain in your vehicle. It's the safest place for you to stay. With the rubber tires, they keep you from uh, being grounded out. In most cases, you're gonna be safer to be inside of the vehicle than out of. Stay in the car. <laughs> Discover a whole new way to capture car videos with the X3 camera from today's sponsor, Insta360. Experience it for yourself by clicking the special link below. If you buy a camera, Insta360 will send you a free accessory. You can choose between sticky lens protectors or an invisible selfie stick. Both of them are great. Get one today. Next clip. <laughs> oh my God, jeez. <laughs> that's gotta hurt, man. Yeah, especially, I mean, you're cruising, you just think that's a oh, real no, shallow that's... pothole. That sucker's deep. Getting launched. Yeah, those guys' backs are getting broken. I enjoy whoever's filming this for us. Yeah, I know. They, they, they put just some cones out, up, but not you know? like, we're gonna get, see it. they just lost the inner fender there, too, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, no, come on. Mike. <laughs> they had an umbrella in the rain. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, at least they were covered. Yeah, well, they just got wet from the bottom up. You can crack wheels very easily. Damage your struts just from one hit. You can mess up a lot real easy. Yeah. Even as small those cars are, they're really hitting in the body areas, yeah. too. We live in a city with tons of potholes. How often do you get pothole damaged cars in your shop? At least once a week, probably. They don't tell us it's pothole damage, but half the time you're like, oh, right front shock is blown. Or a bent rim, it's always almost always on the right front and from why do you think potholes. That, why do you think it's because the right because they swerve to get out of the way? People just can't aim. <laughs> is it better to slow down and hit it or just gun it 
and hopefully you jump it. I would probably not hit the brakes if you do, the front, the suspension will dive. So yeah. you're gonna come like this and you're gonna suck it down a little more. And if you hit it on one side only, the tire, it's gonna pull. You're probably better off just coasting through it and all four going through it right yeah. down the middle. If you don't know the roads in your area, how can you avoid this situation? You can't. You can't. I mean, uh, yeah, you can't. Sorry, you Charlie. Don't know. Hey, Charlie, sorry. You can't avoid it. If you like what you're watching, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. It's the best way for you to show the YouTube algorithm that we're doing a good job. The algorithm doesn't even care about what we're doing. It cares about serving you stuff that you like. So if you tell YouTube that you like this, you'll see more stuff like this. All right, let's get right. Wet day on the streets. Oh, hydroplane. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that happens too often. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, just scoop that guy up. He didn't even see it coming. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. he's so confused yeah. right now. He just he's like, what? Why am I upside <laughs> down? All right, so what happened there? It looked like a Nissan in yeah. the carpool lane. The carpool lane where a lot of water is going to pull coming yeah. around that turn and just going too fast for conditions. Mm -hmm. um, that car, gets on the brakes. Yeah, locking up the brakes gives you no control of where you're going. So once you hit a skid, you're just going wherever the momentum's pushing. Yeah. Now, uh, if anything, you'd want to feather the brakes, uh, but stay off and try to hold the steering wheel for control. Yep. You don't want to do anything aggressive. Ride it out. Yeah, I think as soon as he started to slide, it looked like he tapped the brakes and yep. that set him for more of a turn. Hydroplane means you're above it and not on the road anymore so you're on top of the water mm -hmm. so you hit the brakes all you're doing is sliding do different specialty tires make a lot of difference yeah that makes a big difference we have like summer tires sure our time. compounds yeah. winter tires snow tires stud tires so like our compound like you were talking about is for racing you uh -huh. hit in the water they're worthless you have our compounds on your car yeah me too <laughs> you can't drive it in the rain <laughs> can't even drive it we're you dumb did. yeah Next clip, please. Oh boy, that used to be a street. Now it's a river. <laughs> that, it's almost a mudslide, but now a river. Dude, dude, that is gnarly. Okay, I mean that's pretty simple. Don't park in a river. Yeah, guys, come on, it's pretty simple. Don't, Don't park, park in, in a river. river. Oh man, that thing's gonna be full of mud, grains of dirt, oh, nasty yeah. water. It's receiving some pretty nasty body damage at the moment as well. Yeah, so it's getting beat up. You're just gonna have all debris in the motor, not in it, but around your engine compartment, other areas, it's just gonna be a nightmare to get through. Say you find a really good deal on a flood damaged car, should you buy it? I would never buy one. If the deal's too good to be true, it is. Or if you just want to make a race car for your YouTube channel. Uh, if you're gonna do an engine swap, who cares? Buy it. Okay, I will. It just depends. Fresh water and salt water make a big difference when we talk about flood damage. Yeah. So salt water is gonna eat up a vehicle 10 times the amount fresh water would. You just gotta see in your time frame of how long since it was flooded. This is an auction car that's been on a lot for eight months where all that water dried out and corroded. Yeah, if water doesn't get in, into the interior or inside the wiring harness, I mean inside it, mm -hmm. I think it's, it'll be all right. If you can get something that's you know freshly been flooded, you have a good chance where you can pull out plugs, roll the motor over yeah. and then start drying out all the electrical. So it's a doable thing. And there's some cases for certain vehicles. I yeah. would definitely hop on board, even if it had a locked motor. Do you think there's anything that they could have done to prevent that poor Prius from parking walking down it, the street? Yeah, parking it up a higher hill probably. Yeah. Um, but no, it looks like everyone's getting damaged, whether the car's going down the street or not. All right, well, I feel bad for that Prius owner, but hey, maybe it's a blessing in disguise. Maybe Absolutely. they were sick of the car. They're gonna you know? get an upgrade, I'm sure. Yeah. When electricity and water mix, it usually doesn't end well. Let's see how things go for this Tesla driver. Oh, buddy. That's well, a little deep. <laughs> I guess he doesn't have to worry about sucking water maybe into the, the engine. Yeah, maybe all the cameras filming would have been a good sight that is gonna be deeper. Oh, no, he's he's got it. Yeah, dude, he's cruising. <laughs> he's absolutely cruising. Uh, it, uh, oh. So most people, myself included, would assume that an EV would just shut off if they did this. Why didn't that happen? Whatever components that it needs didn't get wet. I mean, if it got wet, it'd 
probably have some serious issue. He probably would have stopped halfway through. Hoping his AC was off, unless his recirculation was on. Because if not, it's gonna be all in his dash <laughs> and going through into the floorboard for the rest of time. This has got to have water inside it, no doubt. Do you think that uh, traditional internal combustion engines or electric vehicles suffer more damage from extreme cases of weather? Uh, combustional engines, I'd say, they don't recover as well, especially once it gets into the engine. Uh, both the same amount, whatever. A combustion engine, if you suck water, you could bend a rod. Electric cars, electricity and water don't get along. But they get along real well. Well, that's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Watch out. We have an exciting channel announcement. If you're a master level mechanic in the Los Angeles area, this is your chance to become a featured guest on this channel. Just go to realmechanicstuff.com for more info. <laughs> Let's check out the next clip. Dude, fog's scary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh! Oh, this is... Well, our dash cam driver managed to stop, but the guy next to him didn't. There's really no good place to be here, guys. Dude, I mean, you can't be going fast. You can't see more than it 20 feet in front so of your car. Quick. I would be driving at 60 miles an hour. I'm not, he, the guy was mashing him. He was. Yeah, that white car was scooting. He's still. They it's call it foggy. the killer fog for a reason. I mean, the fog reflects light back. Right, yeah. I mean, well, you shouldn't so, use your high beams for sure. Yeah, and I think it's it's lower the better, right? Yeah, trying to go lights under are it's, yeah. below the bumper. Your lights are going to reflect back at you a lot and make uh, it worse. Unless you're in a Toyota Tacoma. I hear if you just turn on all of the lights, <laughs> the fog actually burns away. <laughs> Any other good tips for what you should do well, if driving in fog? More than just off the shoulder, you know, off the interstate altogether. Maybe into a safe parking lot because a lot of times it can sweep through different areas or, you know, again, on roads like this, there's not a whole lot of shoulder for you. Yeah, and you don't want to be the guy catching whoever's coming up behind you. Nah, stay away from the killer fog. The killer fog. The killer fog. It's the name of my new band. Next clip. Just a reminder to wash your car. Is that salt? That's salt. Ugh. This car is definitely from back east. Oh, for right. sure, dude. That's All a right. lot of salt. That's a lot of salt. And salt makes metal corrode. Corrode. And put your squints on real hard right there. You better be wearing safety glasses to look mm -hmm. at that. You're going to get some salt in your eyes. Uh, if you don't know, when there's ice on the roads, a lot of states and counties will dump just like a bunch of salt on the road because salt, salt water. Makes, so it won't ice. Right. The truck spreads it on the roads. Yeah. So it the, doesn't freeze and people don't crash. The problem with this is when you drive your metal car on top of salt for months after months every year, especially in winter when it's cold and you don't want to wash your car. Uh, it makes the undercarriage and the sides of your car rust. Be mindful of how long you ride in shoulder areas and stuff like that, because that's where the majority of this stuff stays. You were talking about earlier with flood damage vehicles, salt water versus fresh water. This is... This and yeah, this is ex way more extreme, way yeah. more salt uh, than you'd usually see from your ocean. In the Midwest and stuff, where they use salt, uh, people would get their truck or their car mm -hmm. oil sprayed. Like a dip under there almost, yeah. of like a liner that goes. Um, and, and help coats them. You know, fortunately, most GM vehicles have more of a wax on their yeah. frame. So it's, uh, it actually gets on you when you work on it a lot. It's quite mm -hmm. annoying, but the way they coat their frames protects them from issues like that. Find a good way to rinse under your vehicle, whether it's attachment or a spray yeah. and wash, yeah. or I think there's other areas out there and services that you can do, but yeah. ultimately preventative maintenance. Get this done before you start upriding the vehicle in heavily salted areas yeah. and save yourself the headache of doing all the maintenance yeah. from there. All right, so we got one last clip to show you, but before we do that, Paul, remind the people where they can find you. I own LexTech. We are Lexus and Toyota only, and we are in Los Angeles, California. You can follow us on Instagram on LexTech.LA. My name's Josh Mazzotti. I own Mazzotti Auto in Silmar, California. We specialize in steering, suspension, and gear work on on and off-road vehicles. So any of you street performance, classic guys, or Jeepers, or Tacoma guys, come by and see us. With Mother Nature always plotting your doom, sometimes you gotta make the best out of the situation. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, dude. Drifting the box truck. Look at that. Dude, that guy rules. He can drive. I mean, he can yeah. drive, though. Uh, I'd say he can drive. He can drive. Hell yeah. This is how I learned to drive. <laughs> Box trucks. Dude. 
<laughs> He's getting it. <laughs> That was no accident. That was controlled. Yeah. This guy could definitely drive because he doesn't let off the gas. You let off the gas and hit the brakes, and all you're going to do is slide, and whatever direction you are headed is the way you're going to keep going. So you go from doing this to this, and this. So if you guys want to learn how to drift, that's kind of how you do it. Stay in it. Stay in it. Don't hit the brakes. Mom, that's when you're doing it on purpose. What should you do if you start sliding around on the snow unintentionally? Again, uh, stay off the brakes. Feather the gas very lightly and try mm -hmm. to gain control. And um, no sharp maneuvers like this, this hot rod's doing yep. right here. You got to be smooth. Yes. If you've shot some amazing footage that you want a real mechanic like Paul here to react to, you can now send it to us on realmechanicstuff.com. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and everything else we put up. You can check out more videos on our other channel, Donut. We upload all the time. Don't forget to subscribe to this one and that one. Hit that bell to make sure you get notifications. Leave a comment down below. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for coming Thank in. Thank you. And we'll see you guys next time on Real Mechanic Stuff. Goodbye. Discover a whole new way to capture car videos with the X3 camera from today's sponsor, Insta360. Experience it for yourself by clicking the special link below. Get one today.